to give the VLOOKUP its real justice, it really takes about half an hour to 45 minutes. So we really require a lot more um, time to do that. But I just want to touch on it so that you understand how data validation can be combined with a, v, with a lookup function to, to, to enable you to improve the quality of your data. OK, well, we're becoming experts in data validation. You know from the experience that we've already seen that in column K, we're going to click on our data validation. And I'm going to set up my settings. I'm going to suggest, I'm going to tell it that I don't want to allow any value. I want it to allow a list. Well, what is that list going to validate against? That list is going to validate against the CPT code, not the description. Remember, our user is going to be inputting the, the, the CPT code. We then want the system to prompt us to get the, and provide us with the description. So I'm validating my CPT codes reside in cells N2 through N12, but the description is outside of my validation table. I'm only validating against column N. I'm going to have my input in column K, but I'm going to validate against column N. And then in column L, what you see as the description, the short description, will appear in column L, L from column O. So let's go here. Tighten your seatbelts. You're going to like this, ladies and gentlemen. I go here. I type in my first patient had a cabbage vein single, 3-3. Three, three, whoops, excuse me. Hold on, hold on. Data, validation. I'm going to do my list. My source is going to be N. I forgot to close my validation. I forgot to set up my parameters. In my enthusiasm to, to show you this, I'm going to then say, for the input message, input valid CPT code. And this is so important that I want to stop the user, and I'm going to say invalid CPT code. Please check. I then click OK. And notice I get my valid my uh, prompt here. I then put in my 33510. And lo and behold, look what happened. I just populated K2, and the system went out and populated the description. Where did it get the description? It got the description from over here. Let me do another one. I type in 335. Oh, actually, I shouldn't be typing anything. I should be using my drop down. Shame on me. I put in 33522, and it tells me my patient had a cabbage artery vein 5. You get the idea? And so what it's doing, and here's the key, and I'm going to just touch on this now, and we'll, we'll spend more time on it later, or really at our next seminar, is this formula up here. You see a VLOOKUP formula. This is one of the most powerful and probably the most underutilized features of Excel. This, in combination with data, data validation, can really improve the quality of your data tremendously. I'm going to briefly describe it, and then when we get together uh, next month, well, I'll go into this in greater detail. What the VLOOKUP says is, take the contents of cell K2. Well, what's in K2? K2 is my CT, CPT code. Then it says, go over, interrogate, look at N2 through O12, and if it finds a match, give me the second column. I'm going to ignore the zero. For now, we'll come back to that next week. I don't want to get people too confused on this. So again, look up cell K2, my CPT entry, validate it against the entire range of N2 through O12. And if there's a match, display the second column in my lookup table. I go back here. I choose another one. And you can see how much fun I'm having. I am able to just go through and Pull, pull that up and go in and validate every one of my CPT codes against the description. Now, what about, what's with this NA? Well, NA is very valuable. NA tells you, hey, something it doesn't match. Let's suppose I go in and I put in 99999 for my CPT code. Look what happens. I hit enter, invalid. Invalid CPT code, please check. Now, why wasn't it there? Well, because I didn't have 999 somewhere deep in my master table. 
Let's suppose for a second I made a mistake in my master table. Let's suppose I call this 99999. Watch what happens. If I go over here and I type in 99999, it now goes and gets it. So you can see the power of this. I don't want to leave that there because that, that would be really a, a bad thing to do, but you get the idea. The user inputs the CPT code. The CPT code then goes out here. It says, is there, the user inputs the CPT code. The CPT code then goes over here and it says, is there a match? And if in fact there is a match, it says display the description. Really powerful stuff. We'll be getting into this in a deep way next month. Um, between now and then, there's some real good reading if you go out and look at the VLOOKUP. Um, the first time you do a VLOOKUP, it might take you an hour. The second time you do it, it'll probably take you 30 minutes. The, first, the third time you do a VLOOKUP, it'll probably take you five minutes. It's something, it's a, it definitely is an acquired skill, uh, kind of like an acquired taste, I suppose. Um, the, um, the next uh, topic, we're, we're now going to get into the topic of logic, the if logic. I've got a question. Uh, somebody has in, uh, sent a question in saying, uh, what about leading zeros from the medical record number? Medical record numbers could certainly start with a zero, but it won't allow them to be entered. Yes, there are ways to fix that, and I will demonstrate those in a few moments. Also, what do the green arrows mean in column L? The green arrows indicate that we have text, that it's, that it's text there, and the NA is saying that, that there's nothing that ha has match. And so what it's doing is it's telling us that it can't process what we've got there. As soon as we put, put in an allowable value here, it gives me, it takes the green arrow away and it tells me that, there, that it's putting a, 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 an allowable value from the field over here. Okay, let me jump now to a topic that, we, uh, that, that is known as the if statement and the if logic. This is the exercise that is, again, one of the things that is very underutilized in the world of Excel. And this is a feature that allows you to be able to go in and create your own categories. Creating your own categories based upon some predefined clinical criteria. So for example, and I'm, we're going to go work through four examples here. Example number one is the, our, our usual data. We've got the usual data that we've been working with the entire time. And now I want to decide, should, are, are these charts going to be reviewed? In fact, you know what? Let me just make things a little less confusing. Let me hide those for now, and I'm going to come back to those in, in just a moment. Do I want to review each chart? Well, how am I going to decide whether I want to review the chart? We're going to use our friend the if statement. The if statement is a wonderful tool, and it's a, it's a great place to start in your usage of the logical statements that are embedded into Excel. The if statement allows you to write a simple line of, of code, a, a, a really a description, a simple formula, and that formula is going to then go in and make a decision based upon what you've done. Now, you probably remember from high school math, when, or junior high school math, when your teacher said, whenever you write an equation and you open up a parentheses, you must close that parentheses, right? You remember that from, from probably eighth or ninth grade math? Well, that principle of open parentheses, close parentheses is critical here. We're going to be doing this again and again. And if you're like most students, eighth graders, ninth graders, when the teacher said you, yeah, every time you open up a parenthesis, you need to close that parenthesis. You probably went home and told your parents that uh, why were they making you take this class? It was irrelevant. It has no real basis in reality. Well, that was preparation for today, ladies and gentlemen. What we are going to be doing is I'm going to show you a formula now that depends upon your ability to understand that every time I open up a parenthesis, I must close a parenthesis. Notice column, notice my formula bar in column K, in cell K2. I'm going to take it apart for you. Notice I begin with the equal sign. Why? Because in Microsoft Excel, every formula begins with equal sign. And notice there are no spaces whatsoever here. Equals if, open parentheses, I2 is greater than 3, comma yes, comma no. Okay, let me translate that into English. 
Let's go from being pro computer programmer to let's go into speaking English. You didn't know you were going to become a programmer today. We put in equals if, we set up the parameter, we set up the decision. If I2, what's an I2? Ah, the length of stay. Ah, well, you see, I've got my length of stay there, okay? So, if the length of stay is greater than three, yes, review the chart. Otherwise, no, don't review the chart. A very simple phrase, okay? I'll read it back again. Equals if length of stay is greater than three, say yes, respond yes to the prompt to the, to the, in the column review chart. Respond yes. If not, respond no. That second comma there basically is what we call in the world of programming an argument. Now, it's not an argument like the argument you have with your friend or your spouse. It's an argument that says, if you say this, I do that. That set probably sounds familiar to a lot of people. So now we're going to, I'm going to reread it one more time. If the length of stay is greater than three, display yes. Otherwise, display no. That is your friend the if statement. It is critical. It is great. And it is a very, very useful and very underutilized tool in data analysis.